In this video, we'll be recording vocals in Aurea Pro. Let's go! Hi, my name is Pete, and I promise I'll never do that again. Today, we are indeed recording some vocals into Aurea Pro. I'll show you how to set up your tracks, how to get your vocal recordings in, and even how to use some effects on the way in or afterwards. So let's dive straight into Aurea Pro and get cracking. So here we are, we're all set up. If you missed the previous videos where we imported these and where we created these MIDI tracks, you can check those out down in the description or up the top there right now. But for this one, we've set up a vocal track, but I am gonna go a step backwards and show you how we did that so that we can record some vocals for this song. At the moment, it sounds a little bit like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to record a few different vocal parts in here. This is actually a bit of a rap vocal. So we, you're going to get to see Pete do a bit of rapping. And then I'm going to record some of the nice harmonies and melodic little chorus section here. So it won't be the whole lot, but I'll give you a bit of a preview because I've been playing around and getting familiar with recording audio recorder tracks here in Aurea Pro. So that's what we're going to do. Let's set up right now. Now, once again, I'm not going to show you the setup in detail, but what you're seeing on your screen right now is a quick overview. I've got my microphone, my AKG D5, plugged in through my Steinberg UR22C. That's going via the 10 DAC powered USB hub into my iPad Pro via my USB-C adapter. If you want to know more about how to hook up your microphones and your other audio gear, check out the details down in the description and head over to studiolivetoday.com slash gear to find out all the stuff I use. But for now, let's crack on and get this set up. Now, I'm just going to delete this track because I want to show you how we can get it set up. So here is my song at the moment. Uh, we've got the four, five different tracks here with our backing track. These are the MIDI tracks we recorded last time. Now we want to add in a new track to record audio, to record vocals through my microphone. So to do that, we come up here to menu. We tap on add a track like that. We want one mono track and we want to add it in here. We're going to hit OK and boom, down the bottom here, we've got our new mono track. If we tap on it, we can now move it around. So what I want to do is I'm going to move this right to the top actually so we can get a good look at it. So we'll tap and hold, wait till it turns that black color, drag it on up and then put it right up here at the top. Boom. There we go. So there is my vocal track ready to go. I'm now gonna zoom in a little bit so that I can see a little bit more of what's going on here. So I've got my backing tracks here, I can see those. And as you would have seen in previous videos, the more we zoom in, the more of these options we get. So we can just get it to a nice level like that. That's gonna be good. I'll, I'll see my drum beat, so I'll be able to know where I'm at in the track as we record here. Now there's a few things that we need to take into consideration before we actually grab the mic and hit the record button. So let's take a look at those now. Now, if you saw the last video, you probably saw me get in trouble with buffer settings. So this is one thing you do need to keep in mind. It will help with things like your latency or your lag and any glitching that you get in your playback. So if we go into the menu and we come down here into settings, you'll see this very top one is your buffer setting. Now, the lower the buffer, the less latency that you're going to get there. You increase the buffer, you're going to get more latency when you're recording, but you're going to be able to play back more sounds at once. It's a, always a trade-off when you're trying to set these. So I've got the buffer set here at 128. We're going to now enable the microphone and then I'll jump back and show you the difference and, and some of that latency that you are going to hear if you have your buffer set incorrectly. Now at this stage, we don't have our track armed to record and that's why we can't, check one, two, hear anything coming through this microphone until we actually arm the track. To do that, all we need to do is tap on the record button and you can already see there that we're now coming through over on this microphone as well. And you can see with this wave coming up here on our meter, not a wave, but a meter, you can actually see that it's coming through there. And if we tap the mic, it's coming on through. So that's all good to go. And what we can now do is I'm gonna show you the difference with your buffer settings and why these are so important. So we'll go to menu, we'll go to settings. And as you can see, currently we're set at 128 on the buffer settings. I'm gonna turn off this mic and talk to you through this one and you'll be able to sort of see a bit of the latency here. So I've now turned off this microphone. I'm just speaking to you through this one and you won't be able to hear it, but in my headphones, I'm hearing the smallest amount of delay. There's just that little bit of latency with the buffers set like this. If I come in here to my settings and you can try this yourself at home with whatever microphone you're using, we'll change this buffer. Let's just boost it right up to say 1024. Now when I talk, 
you'll probably see that my lips don't actually match the noise. And in my headphones, I'm hearing it come through. If I turn this mic back up, you'll hear the difference. Now, now you, you can, can hear this microphone here, but, but when, when I talk, talk into, into this one, one you'll hear that delay coming, coming through. through. So, so if you are hearing that delay, that lag, that latency, it's probably your buffer, buffer settings. You need to drop, drop your buffer, buffer setting down at least while you're recording so that you're not going to get latency and therefore your vocals won't be out of time. Now that we know that, let's set this back to 128. So we'll tap on that one. We'll try back at 128. That's sounding better. Let's now get set up and ready to record. So we have our track set here. It is armed to record. Check one, two. We're coming through over there. Now I have learned a cool new thing. If we double tap on the backwards button, it takes us back to the start of the track. That, I use that all the time now. So that's a handy little extra tip to give you there. Now what we can do here before we record, I'm just going to tap on the FX button because I've talked about input gain before and we've set the input gain on the uh, audio interface here, but then we want to set the output gain so we can hear ourselves at the right level. So with this down here, check one, two, it's coming through, but I can't hear it very well in the mix when I'm playing back. So what I can do is adjust this one, adjust the output volume, and I tend to have my output volume of my vocals quite loud. Again, don't confuse this with input volume. You want to set your input volume so that you're sitting on your meter there around about 50 to 75%. And I've showed that in previous videos as well. But you can turn up this output meter so that you can hear yourself better when you're recording. We're not going to add any effects this time around, so we'll close out of that one. Uh, we're going to tap on the screen. The, the mouse button doesn't always work here. Uh, we'll close out of that one and then check in that chest. Ding, are we at about 60 to 70%? We are. So we're good to go. Let's now hit the record button and record in a vocal take here in Aurea Pro. So to do this, I'm going to tap on the record button there, make sure my record light is flashing, and then hit the play button, and then we'll be good to go. Checking my levels, making sure I can hear myself. Coming on through, yeah, ready to go. Sometimes I sit around and wonder how it is I got here and if I'm going under All the complications of my life All the times when I couldn't reach the knife in my back to the days when I was a little kid Always think about the things I never did Always think about the next big problem Even when it's someone else that's on the Hook me in, line and sinker Ever wonder what it's like to be an overthinker Tinker with all my little thoughts Maybe it was just the way that I was taught to Just believe that I was right and when I lay in bed at night, the thought's still going round and round and round and round in my head. We'll stop that one. There we go. Looking pretty good. We can now hit the, yep, we've stopped that. We can hit the record light to stop that one flashing. And there's our vocal recording. So it's as simple as that to get yourself set up here. I didn't really show you any of the input settings because I didn't have to change it. I'm using input one here. It'll default to input one on your audio interface. We'll show more about that when we hook up a guitar in the next video. Uh, but for now, I'm pretty comfy with this. So if we want to play this back, we just come up here to where my vocals start. We hit play and let's take a listen. Sometimes I sit around and wonder how it is I got here and if I'm going under all the complications of my life, all the times when I couldn't reach the knife in my back to the days when I was a little kid. Cool. That's coming through fine. Now, of course, we've recorded clean vocals here, so there's no effects on there. We've got no compression, no reverb, no delay. When I record, I actually like to have a little bit of those effects, but don't worry. We can set those up. That's what I'm going to show you now. Let's do a second take of those vocals, but this time, let's use some delay and some reverb, and we'll uh, record this one now. Now I could of course add another track, but I'm just actually going to delete this take. So I'll just tap on that one and tap delete, double tap this one and come back here to the start. Now what I can do is set up some effects here. So to do that, I tap on the FX button here. Now here is my channel strip. So right here, if we want to use this, we've got an expander, an equalizer and a compressor here. Now to actually turn these on, this took me a little while to figure it out. We actually need to select them down here. So actually turn the lights on here and each component is controlled individually. So you'll see the little FX light there comes on once we start adding things here because we've now got some effects in here. 
So one thing that you may want to add in, first of all, is a compressor. Recording through a compressor just means you give a little bit of a gain boost to your vocals. It's often easier to hear it back in your headphones. So let's play around with this compressor, first of all, to get the sound that we want. Now, once again, we do need to record enable. If we want to hear, check one, two. If we want to hear ourselves coming through this microphone, we need to have the record enabled here. So here is our compressor. Again, we turn it on by tapping down here. The effects light comes on, so we're actually good to go. Now, if you've not used a compressor before, I'll link some more videos down below if you want to learn more about them. But basically, what a compressor will do is it will actually push down, it'll squash, it'll compress the top end, the loudest parts, and then you need to pull up the rest of the gain to actually give you a nice even sound. So here's our compressor threshold up the top here. We've got our ratio from anywhere from one to one, which is nothing, all the way around to sort of uh, a limiter, which is like an infinite uh, 100 to one kind of ratio. And then we've got a filter on here, our attack and our release, and then our output gain. So in its simplest form, what we want to do is turn up the compressor. But what's going to happen is, let's just take a listen here. I'll turn off this microphone and I'll dial up the compressor and we'll just hear what this does. So I'm over on this microphone now, and if I turn the compressor off, there you go. If I turn it back on and start dialing up this threshold, I'm actually getting quieter, aren't I? Because it's actually squashing those peaks. And that's where you may just want to throw on this one, the makeup gain. And there you go. You can hear I'm coming through nice and loud and a little bit crispier. So it's just going to be a bit easier to cut through the mix. So again, you can play around with these with different ratios, different thresholds. You can change the attack and the release. But just for a simple setup, we're just going to add that. So that's the compressor on. Let's turn it off. That's the compressor off, compressor back on. Again, once you've recorded, you can readjust these settings. So don't worry if you don't get them spot on. It's just going to help us when we're recording because now I can hear my voice coming through this mic a whole lot better. Back over to this one. While we're playing around with that, we can actually add in any other effects we want. Here we have our channel strip. We can add in other effects. So let's say we want a little reverb here. If we tap on this, we can use any of the presets here, any of the reverbs and uh, the delays and plugins that are included here in Aurea Pro, or we can add any of our own third-party AUV3 plugins. So I haven't played with this before, so let's just grab the classic verb, shall we? The mono classic verb here. Turn that on, and now... Hello. You can hear that that's uh, way too intense, right? So let's instantly turn the mix down because we don't need anywhere that much reverb on here. We don't want 50% reverb. But now, hello, is it me? No, I can't sing that. Uh, <laughs> I'll get a copyright strike. Uh, but we can have a little bit of mix on there. So let's just see if this is going to work for this vocal. If we turn down this mic and take a listen. Sometimes I sit around and wonder how it is I got here and if I'm going under all the complications of my life, all the times when I couldn't reach the knife in my back to the days when I was a little kid, always think about the things I never did. I think that's about right. I think that's about what we want. So we don't want it to be too long. We don't want too much in the mix, but just a little bit in there can often help you when you're singing along. So there you go. That's how we can add in effects, any sort of effects that we like, ready to record here. So let's now just record another quick take through using this setup here in Aurea Pro. Sometimes I sit around and wonder how it is I got here and if I'm going under all the complications of my life, all the times when I couldn't reach a knife in my back to the days when I was a little kid, always worry about the things I never did. All right, that is recorded in. We can now close out of our channel strip there. There it is. So we've recorded that one in there again. Um, yeah, is it looking about right? Yep, yeah, kind of. Let's just come in here. We'll turn off our, our track there. We'll hit the play button now and take a listen. Sometimes I sit around and wonder how it is I got here and if I'm going under all the complications of my life, all the times when I couldn't reach a knife in my back to the days when I was a little kid, always worry about... So what we can now do is we can start playing around with this. We can change all of these things and we can start remixing it as we go. So this is the flexibility of using something like this is we can come in here, we can now add EQ, we can now change our compression, our reverb settings, and everything is here at our fingertips. So let's pop out of that one now. Of course, the beauty of a multi-track recorder is not just to record one vocal track, but you might have heard there that this goes into a chorus section and we need to record the melodic chorus sound here. So 
let's show you before we finish up how we can do some multi-tracking of our vocals here in Aurea Pro. So let's set up a new track. We're going to go menu, we're going to go add track, and we're gonna add one mono track. Now we'll put it back down the bottom here. So again, we can tap on it, tap and hold, and drag it on up, because we want it right here under our other track. There you go, we're good to go. Double tap to come back to the start, and we're fine. Except this time around, we actually wanna just come in here because our chorus section doesn't come in till around about this part here. That's where we wanna sing along for this chorus. So we actually want to start queuing it up here. So let's get our track set up again. We'll zoom in again so we can see those extra buttons that we saw before. There's our first track. Our second track's here as soon as we record enable it. Check, one, two, we're coming through on this one. You can see the metering is going up there. That is all good. Now this time around, we'll do the effects thing again. We'll add our compressor, just like we did before. Put the makeup gain on and turn up our threshold so that we're getting it. Uh, you might notice that the amount of compression is just this bit here. So yeah, 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 yeah. The more of that goes up, the more it's actually compressing, the more effect the compressor's having. So if you're turning it up and you're not sure if it's doing anything, check your little meter there and you'll be able to see exactly what your compressor's doing. Uh, this time, why don't we have a little delay, shall we? A little stereo delay that we'll throw on this track. On this track. Check, 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 check. <laughs> uh, so that's too much uh, that's delay. Too much. We'll just turn the wetness down of that one. So we can play around with the different sorts of delays that we have on here. I haven't actually used this one very much, so. Don't always believe the things in your head. Yeah, we'll, we'll leave it like this for now, um, because, yeah, again, I haven't played around with the details of it. But uh, we'll record with this just to show you that we can use any other plugin that we like in here uh, as a recording template. We're ready to go now. That's literally all there is to it. We can now get ready to record. So as I mentioned before, we're just gonna put ourselves here so that we can hear the end of this bit, but we're only gonna record on this track. And this will show you how we can record on a second track. And then you can obviously do your harmonies and do your overdubs and do your other things. And when we do the guitars, you'll see more about this as well. But let's now cue it up. We'll hit the record light here. We'll hit the play button and we'll record in our chorus section. Maybe it was just the way that I was taught to just believe that I was right. And when I lay in bed at night, the thought's still going round and round and round and round in my head. Don't always believe the things in your head. Sometimes it's just imagination. There you go, we've recorded in our backing track. Now I think that uh, what we can do is now go over to our mixer, we'll turn off that record, we'll go over to our mixer here, uh, because I think, that we can again, we can access the FX from here. We need a little more compression on this first one. We'll put the vocal compression up a little bit on that there. And then if we go to this second one, uh, we'll do the same there. We just need a little bit more. And I actually want a little more of this stereo delay sound. So we'll tap the little E there. That's gonna take us to our effects. We'll increase that now that we're not singing along with it and we'll see what that sounds like. So uh, if we come back to our waveform view and let's take a listen to this transition between these two and see what it sounds like here in Aurea Pro. Night, the thought's still going round and round and round and round in my head. So that one's not loud enough, yeah? So again, we can either go back into our mixer or we can just tap the FX here and use this one to bring us on up. So let's hit play again. Sometimes it's just imagination. <laughs> so the delay is not quite right for this one, but that's okay. It's a bit funny, so we're going to leave it there. Now, of course, we can come back and record the next part in here. So let's just quickly do that. We'll show you this one last thing, and then we'll finish up. So again, I want to go back to the, the rap sort of vocal section here. So I just cue this up. I grab that one. I hit record. I hit record there. We hit the play button, and then we can record back in our next section. Just imagine Nations warring, everything is burning Kind of surprised if the world keeps turning And there you go, we can continue on with that So that's how you can quickly and easily get some vocals here into Aurea Pro Pretty darn cool, lots of flexibility Don't forget those buffer settings Don't forget that you can add in those effects But make sure that your buffer's set right Otherwise, you'll be dealing with a bunch of lag and latency Hope you found this one useful Check out the rest of the videos down there and there We will be back to finish this one off with some guitars and some bass recording So I hope you can join me for that one real soon Take care See ya.